All right, guys, and welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the start of a brand new series where I go to various different teams in various different leagues and try and identify three key positions that they need to improve and who they can realistically bring in with the funds they've got available. This is Smart Signings for FM23. So to keep me on the straight and narrow, I've created a few rules that I have to adhere to just to keep things consistent. Identify three key positions that need to be improved and use the current transfer budget to sign all loan players to improve the team. Now, I am able to sell a few players who aren't up to scratch for the team, and I can move on players whose contracts are expiring in order to free up funds and open up the opportunity to sign a couple of extra players if needed. And finally, try to keep it realistic. So no signing unknown wonderkid goal-scoring phenoms for teams that A, don't have the draw, B, don't really know about them, and C, don't really have the money to be doing it. So try and keep the signings as realistic as possible. So the first team I will be flexing my recruitment muscles over will be my team, the team I've supported my entire life, and a team that, even though we've had a pretty good transfer window, is still in desperate need of strengthening in a few positions. And that is, of course, Manchester United. So I've had a little bit of a clean-up of the first-team squad. As always, there's a ton of kids in the first team and first-team players in the under-23s when you start your save. I've had a clean-up, and this is what we're looking at. It is a 24-man squad, but there are a few players in here that we could be looking at moving on. There are quite a few players' contracts who are running out. Obviously, the Bravka is on loan with a buy option, but Ronaldo, Fred, Marcus Rashford, Twan Zebe, Luke Shaw, David De Gea, and Diogo Dalot, all of their contracts are at the end of the season, so... I need to figure out who's worth keeping and who do we want to move on. Cristiano Ronaldo, whilst possibly one of the best players ever to do it, is 37 years old now, so he is not the future of the club anymore. Still an unbelievable goal scorer, but he is on a huge wage, £475,000 a week. There is a decision to be made. You can either try and sign him onto a new contract at a lower rate. I've seen a few people able to get him to agree to a £250,000 a week contract. I think, though, we're going to look to move him on. It's a new era at Man United. Cristiano Ronaldo has been a fantastic servant. He's been a fantastic player for the club, but... The next era is going to be without him. Next up, Fred, a tidy utility player with a great work rate, great physicals. He's 29 years old, though, not on an insignificant wage. And I think what we'll do is we'll test the waters, see if there is any bids for him. If we can move him on, we'll move him on. Rashford, though, for me, has got to stay. 24 years old, still got a bit to improve, and he's just a very good player still. Has had a bit of a downgrade on last year. His work rate is significantly lower, but he's a very quick player. He's very dribbly. He's determined and he's a youth product as well. So I want to keep him around, maybe build a bit of our front line around him, see how he does. Twanzebe is an awkward one and one I think I'm going to just stick a pin in. A decent defender, youth product, so he's good for European registration. And I think he's perfectly fine as a third, fourth, fifth choice centre back. So we'll see how he does once he comes back from injury and see what kind of new contract he'd want. There is a contract extension clause on him, so I might just trigger that. Luke Shaw is a player that I ummed and ahed about a little bit. In real life, he flips from outstanding to dreadful, and he's pretty good in-game. He's not outstanding, he's lacking a bit of determination, his work rate's not all there, but in terms of his physicality, his ability to get up the pitch, getting across, beat a man, he is pretty good. And I think we're going to struggle to find someone for what we could get for him on a similar wage that's going to be significantly better. So again, I think we're just going to extend his contract and then maybe renegotiate at the end of the season. Diogo Dallo next. Tidy all-round fullback, but he's just not incredible at anything, is he? He's pretty quick. He's pretty big. His reading of the game's pretty good. He's pretty good on the ball. He's pretty good in defense, but he's not outstanding at any. I think we keep him around. He's on a very low contract. He's still 23 years old, so could improve still. But he's not the future of Man United at right back. And I think this is definitely one of the positions we need to look at. And finally, David De Gea. He is a legend at Manchester United. But unfortunately, I think his goalkeeping style is a little bit outdated. And that is reflected in his attributes this year. Still a wonderful shot stopper, but his inability to command the area, uh, come off the line, pass, you know, is just not the best. And the mental side of his game has had a bit of a downgrade this year as well. So whilst he has been fantastic for Man United, I think this will be his last year. I'll see if we can move him on, but I think at this wage, we're really going to struggle. So it might be a case of bringing in a new keeper underneath him to start over him next year. And there is one player that I think we're going to move on, and that is Aaron Wambasaka. We'll see what we can get for him. He's obviously an incredibly talented player physically, incredible in the tackle, but mentally just lacking. He doesn't have the ability on the ball that we need going forward. 
I think he'd really suit like a deep block side that just needs someone to defend and lay it off, that can cover space, can win the ball back and stop crosses getting in. But that's not what I want. I want a dynamic fullback that's going to get up and down, be able to defend properly as well as be useful on the ball and in the final third. So we'll see what we can get for Aaron Wambasaka. He's got two years left on his deal, but he'll be one of the players that I think we're just going to try and move on and see if we can get a few extra funds for, uh, for our rebuild. So as we load into the game, this is probably how the team is going to be lining up in a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 with De Gea in goal, a back line of Luke Shaw, Lissandro Martinez, Rafael Varane and Diego Dallo with new signing Casemiro and Eriksen in the midfield alongside Bruno. Wide players of Sancho and Anthony or you can have Rashford out there as well. Rashford up front and support up top provided by Anthony Martial. So here we are about a week later and as you can see from our now 21-man squad, we have moved a few players on. First off, Fred is now an Ajax player. He went there for 11.25 million and he's going to strengthen their squad because all their players left in the summer. Decent player, but at 29 years old, cashing in on him now does give us a bit of extra cash to work with going forward. And quite surprisingly, Aaron Wambasaka joins him. Uh, again, an Ajax player. He has gone there for 12.5 million, so quite a bit less money than he was valued at, but I think... To, to get a bit of cash for him before his contract starts running out, cash on him while we can, it was worth doing. He's never really going to cut it at the level we need him to play at, so move him on, he can go rebuild his career a bit at Ajax. And the big one, Cristiano Ronaldo is now a PSG player, joining Messi, Neymar and Mbappe in the most overpaid strike force in football history? Question mark? <laughs> We are having to pay a bit of his wages, but we did get five million for him, five and a half million. So he does free up a lot of our wage budget and gives us some money to play with. And speaking of money to play with, that does give us an 80 million transfer budget with a decent whack of cash in contracts as well. Now I am going to be allowing myself to structure deals so we can get the right players in at the right price. That'll just give me the flexibility to get the right kind of players in rather than just going for absolute bargain basements. Now we weren't able to move David De Gea on and he is opting to move on at the end of his contract uh, so we've made him a backup player i am going to look to bring in a goalkeeper right now to be our first choice and maybe we can bring in dubravka to be that backup he is actually a really good backup keeper very solid all around good personality not on too much money so the gaps in our squad look as such uh, there's a space at goalkeeper that we need to fill and someone that's going to be at the top of their game for the foreseeable future right back Diogo Dallo will be back up, but I'd like to bring in a guaranteed starter, first choice player at the top of their game. And up front, maybe a little bit harsh on Rashford and Martial, but with Ronaldo leaving, we definitely need some striker strength. Less important than the goalkeeper and right back spots, but I'm going to want to bring someone in who's going to be able to cut it in the Premier League and the Champions League. And also with Fred leaving, I might try and bring in another player for a bit of depth in midfield. Um, obviously, we've lost him. A little bit more versatility, maybe someone who's a little bit better on the ball, just to give Bruno and Eric in a day off when they need to. So first up, let's have a look for that goalkeeper. Justin Bislow is one of the players I was really considering. He's a very good fee on a very low wage, so incredibly affordable. He's also got very good all-round goalkeeping attributes. He doesn't really have that much of a weakness. He's not elite in any of them, really, but very solid all around. Adding to that as well, he's a current Dutch international, very good footballer, but I think we can do a bit better. Unai Simon is a player I heavily considered. Current Spanish number one goalkeeper, very, very good all around player. He's great on the ball as well as being a really competent shot stopper. His mental game's really good. He's 25 years old, so he's not even in his peak as a goalkeeper just yet, but that fee could be a bit of a stretch 77 to 94 million pounds and when i need to strengthen other positions in the squad as well i think it's just going to be a little bit too rich for my blood so i opted for swiss international gregor kerbel wonderful player 24 years old so he has still got a lot of career left at least another decade at the top great aerial reach he's six foot five so he can really go out and claim those crosses he's a really good shot stopper but not only that is he comes off the line he claims stuff he's good with the ball his feet his distribution is very good mental side to his game is really strong which is something that i've really put a lot of weight on with goalkeepers so i think this is a fantastic signing Eighty-five thousand pounds a week he did cost us 50 million pounds so it's a big investment, but 50 million pounds for a goalkeeper of this quality that we're going to have for a long, long time. I'm not mad. Next up, we're going to be looking for a player to start ahead of Diogo Dallo at the right back spot. Like I say, Dallo is a good player. I just think we can do better. First on my radar was a player linked heavily with Man United in real life in the summer. Didn't go through then. Still looks very, very good, and he's very, very versatile. Yuri and Timber can play at right back, centre back, he can play in DM, and even as a right wing back. 
incredibly well-rounded player. He can play all of those positions to a very high level. My only concern with him as a dedicated right back is his, just his ability to get up and down the pitch a little bit. His dribbling is not great. His delivery in the box isn't great. He's much more of a ball-playing centre-back or even like a half-pack deep-line playmaker. So whilst he is a wonderful player, I don't think he quite suits what I want in that position. Another player I was considering was James Justin. 24 years old from Leicester. He has got an England cap now. Very good player, very well-rounded and a bit more forward-facing than Urien Timber. My only thing with him is, is I don't think he'd be that much of an upgrade on Diogo Dallo. They're a similar kind of age with similar kind of potential, but with the fee that we'd be paying for him, I feel like I'd just be having two of the same player. And I really feel like we should be stepping up and getting a better player in that position. So we went to Italy for AC Milan's captain right back, David Calabria. Really well rounded, 25 years old. So once again, a player in his prime. He's still got a lot of years at the top of his game but physically really well-rounded. He's got a great work rate, a great determination, a great personality. Leaders in this Man United team is what's needed. But not only that, incredibly well-rounded defensively. He's solid in the final third as well. He's good on the ball, reads the game well, and he's not on the most obscene contract. £100,000 a week on a five-year deal. He did cost us £50 million. Once again, we structured that out over, I think, four years just to try and get the best value for money and make our money last a little bit longer. I guess only time will tell whether he was the right pickup. Now, striker position. I am thinking of using Marcus Rashford and Anthony Martial in a bit of a striker rotation. Both very good forwards, very quick, good finishers, ability to get on the ball. We've always got the injury worries of Anthony Martial and with last season's performance from Marcus Rashford, I'm not sure whether either of these guys are really going to be able to lead the line to the levels I expect. With the signing of a player like Zhao Felix, it would give us a lot of versatility. He can play as a number 10, he can play off either flank and up front. He's a really, really talented footballer. My only worry with him is he lacks a little bit of pace. So I'm not too sure whether he's going to be the right kind of player to lead the line for Man United. And also, the fee that he'd command, the wages he'd be asking for, I think it's just a little bit much. The other player that I really like the look of is Tammy Abraham. He's six foot five. he's big, he's quick, he's physical, he's a great finisher. But he's not just a battering ram. The guy can dribble. He's actually good on the ball as well with 13 passing and 12 vision. He's got good determination, good decision making. He is pretty much the all-round complete striker. The one downside would be the fee that AS Roma want. So right now, is not the right kind of signing for me. Maybe in a year, maybe in two years, when we just want that final finishing piece at the top of the tree, he could be the guy. But right now, just not able to do it. The player I would love to bring in would be Benjamin Sesko. 19-year-old Slovenian international, really highly rated in real life, and obviously Man United were pretty heavily linked with him in real life in the summer as well. Only downside is he's already got the transfer lined up. He is joining Leipzig at the end of the season, so we're not going to be able to pick him up. It might be a year or two, like Tammy Abraham, until we can pick him up. So that got me thinking, maybe we go for someone who's a little bit younger, a little bit more raw, who in two or three years could be good enough to be our starting striker or could take that position from a Martial who we might look to move on because of his massive wages or Rashford might be moving out to the left a little bit more. So he can be a solid, good backup with tons of potential to play behind someone in a few years. One such player is Evan Elson. Does have the benefit of being able to play out wide as well, but six foot, he's 22 years old, Brazilian. He's not an international yet, but I'm sure he'll be getting in the squad pretty soon. He's fast, he's physical, he's a good finisher, he's tidy on the ball. He looks very, very good. He's not too expensive and I don't think his wages would be ridiculous. So this is definitely the kind of player I'm looking to go for, but not the one I did. Goncalo Ramos was the man I went for. He's a, he was a little bit cheaper at 50 million pounds. He wants 100,000 pounds a week, but 21 years old, he's Portuguese, and he just offers a couple of things that I like a little bit more. He's a little bit more physical. He's got a great work rate determination, model citizen personality. He's also got 15 headings, so he adds that physicality up front that we lose with Cristiano Ronaldo going, and neither Martial or Rashford really have. Um, like then Neither of those guys are going to be winning aerial duels against centre-backs. He's not got the biggest jumping reach, but with decent aggression and bravery, as well as his heading ability, he's going to be able to offer that either coming off the bench or starting, and you link that in with his already very solid finishing, composure off the ball, he's quick. He's just a really good all-round player and with tons of potential to improve as well. 
So those are our three positions sorted. But I did say now we've opened up an extra signing spot with a couple of the players that have left. And I've got a little bit of extra cash laying around. We might strengthen the midfield. So let's see what we did there. So obviously Jude Bellingham would be an incredible signing, but the money that they want for him just isn't doable. Again, maybe in a year, maybe two years, when we're looking at those finishing final touches on the squad, he could be the guy, but not yet. A player who was a little bit more in our budget of around 40 to 45 million pounds, I, I assume. 22-year-old uh, Connor Gallagher, after his fantastic season at Palace last year, has had a decent upgrade this year. Very well-rounded, great physicals, incredible mental game. He's just not really the specialist creative midfielder or defensive midfielder that I'm looking to bring into the club right now. He's really solid all around, and as a box-to-box -box midfielder, someone who can break up play and get into the box to finish chances, he would be brilliant. But I'm looking for someone with a little bit more of a specialist skill set. So I went back to Ajax once again and picked up Edson Alvarez. He cost us 30 million pounds. Again, we structured it a little bit um, on a 90,000 pound a week contract, but the 24 year old Mexican international is a really, really well-rounded player. He can play at center back, he can play at DM, he can play in the center of midfield. He's very tidy on the ball as well as being a really solid defender. So he could cover at centre-back if we have some injuries or need to rotate or just want someone a little bit quicker than Harry Maguire in there. He's also going to be a really good deputy to Casemiro in the anchorman spot or as a bit more of a just a standard central midfielder, even a deep-lying playmaker with his good passing, his good vision and his good decision-making. Now, he's not going to be trying the killer balls that Christian Eriksen or Bruno would be trying from midfield, but he's certainly going to be tidy enough and competent enough to keep the ball ticking over. But it's another good young player with tons of life left in their legs who has already a very high quality player who could maybe even improve and a player like him in this man united side just gives us a lot more depth and stops us needing to run certain players into the ground especially 31 year old midfielders with a heart condition so there we have it with our new look lineup starting goalkeeper and starting right back adding to an already very strong squad and just bringing the level up we've got a goalkeeper now who can play out from the back as well as be an exceptional shot stopper he's going to dominate the area for crosses as well which the just doesn't do and Calabria at right back is an upgrade on Dallo he may not be the elite world-class talent but he is certainly right up there in terms of his ability and when you add in the additions of Alvarez and Ramos as well up front it gives us a lot more versatility we can now start Rashford off the left if we want to we can rotate our forward line a bit we could even play two up top if we wanted to I really feel like these four additions to the Man United side not only strengthen it but give us a lot more depth and could really allow us to push very hard for numerous titles so there we go guys what do you think of my rebuild of man united which signings do you like and which do you don't who would you have brought in instead and how would you have spent the 80 million pound transfer budget if you had it now i really hope you like this this is going to be a series that i carry on throughout fm23 so leave a comment down below and let me know who you'd like to see me give the smart signings overhaul to as always guys if you have enjoyed the video please do leave a thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more fm23 and other gaming content on the channel throughout the rest of the year and of course you can catch me over on twitch.tv slash vikingdan pretty much daily but that's it from me for now and i'll see you next time